Hello again, Staven here for Prismatic Powders. Today we are going to talk about curing your powder coating the right way. You'll be glad to know it's easy. There are just three key components needed to ensure you get your parts cured properly. The cure schedule for the powder, an IR temperature gun or infrared, and a timer of some sort. Knowing how to correctly cure is critical knowledge because an undercured part will adversely affect the integrity of the coating. This could mean a decrease in durability, chemical resistance, and decreased UV resistance. Unfortunately, you cannot tell if the powder is cured by its appearance since the powder will begin to flow and look gelled long before it is actually cured. First, let's talk about the cure schedule. The cure schedule is basically the information provided with each powder that states what temperature that powder needs to be baked at and for how long at that temperature. When the cure schedule is followed, your coating will reach full cure. The cure schedule can be found on the TDS or technical data sheet online or the bag of powder itself. Now, before your parts are ready for the oven, reference the cure schedule so you can set your oven and bring it up to temperature by the time you're done coating. After your coated parts have been in the oven, you can move on to step two. The second step in the process is checking the temperature of your parts. Please note, the time it takes for your parts to come up to temperature will vary based upon the thickness and density of the parts. So use good judgment when you check your part metal temperature, or PMT for short. Knowing the temperature of your part is a critical piece of information in knowing when to start your cure timer because your cure timer doesn't start until the actual part is up to temperature, not when the oven is at temperature. We use an IR temp gun to ensure accurate readings. Since we don't want ambient oven temperature readings when checking the part temperature, you should check it directly on the thickest area of your thickest part and as close to that part as you can manage. This will ensure the most accurate reading. Once your parts are up to temperature, move on to step three, which is as easy as starting your timer according to the time stated on the cure schedule. Then simply pull the parts after the time is up. So at this point, you may be thinking, what if I have parts on the rack that vary in thickness? Won't some come up to temperature and cure before the others? Good question, and thanks for asking. Yes, the thinner or less dense parts will cure faster, so what you wanna do is read the temperature off the thickest part on the rack. The rest of your parts will be just fine if they cure at temperature for a little longer. A lot of people understand that powder coating is pretty forgiving, and though we never recommend winging it with your cure times, it's better to err on the side of a little over curing rather than under curing. Ah, yes, and now I hear your second question. How do I properly cure a two coat combination? Like something with a transparent top coat. The answer is you should partially cure your base coat and then follow the cure schedule for the top coat. Partial cure times will vary depending on the type of powder you're spraying, and we'll put a link in the description notes below for more information about that. So anyway, that's it for now. We've provided a link below for the infrared temperature gun we use. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons if you find these videos helpful, and we will see you next time. Some sort. Knowing how to crap. <laughs> oh, oh, hold on. Oh, my ear. Mitchin. Okay, okay, we're good. <laughs> Hello again. Staven here for Prismatic Back. <laughs> <laughs> there are three key comp. Mm, nope. <laughs> here is critical knowledge because. <laughs> sorry, I like. Move. I like. <laughs> the curing. <laughs> okay. The cure schedule for your powder. An IR temperature gun. <laughs> See you. <laughs> All right, go back, go back. <laughs> Since we don't want ambient, amb ambient, amb ambient, ambient. <sighs>